Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And in this next video, we have a word problem dealing with special products again. So we have to find an expanded expression for the new area and change in area of a square if its side length is either increased by three or decreased by six. So these are two separate scenarios. So we've done a couple of these problems already. So in this particular case, we have a square over here. Notice that we're not given the length, the side length of the square. So that's where the variable is going to come in. So let's call it x. So this square here has a length of x. So this here is the original square for both scenarios. Now in part A, we're told that this square, it's going to be increased by three, or rather, sorry, the side length is going to be increased by three. So the new square it's going to have, let's draw a diagram here, a side length of x plus three, right? And this is gonna be x plus three as well. So what we gotta do is we gotta find the expanded expression for the new area, and then also the change in area. So let's actually write these at the same time since they're not gonna be too big of expression. So the new area, it's obviously going to be x plus 3 times x plus 3. So it's just going to be x plus 3 squared. And then the change in area, as we've discussed in previous problems, it's always going to be the new area minus the original area. So notice that the new area right here, it's x plus 3 squared. And then what's the original area? It's just x times x, which is just x squared. Right, so this is the expression for the new area. This is the expression for the change in area. We have to give an expanded expression though. So let's expand this first. And then whatever we get here, we could just actually plug it in there since these are the same expressions. So we'll have x plus three times x plus three. X times x is x squared. X times three is three x, three x. And then we got nine. So we end up with x squared, notice those are like terms, net out to 6x, we got x squared plus 6x plus 9 like that. So that's the expression for the new area, and then the change in area is going to be the new area minus the original, so x plus 3 squared, we know it's this, so let's just plug that over here, like that. We could subtract the x squared there for the original area, notice the x squareds cancel out. So 6x plus 9 ends up being the expression for the change in area, right? So those are the answers for part A. Now, what about part B? Let me uh, keep the same format over here. Now, part B, instead of increasing the side length, we're told it's decreased by 6. So it's actually going to end up being a smaller square because we're decreasing the side length. So let's draw maybe a smaller square here. And this side length now is going to be x minus 6, like that, right? But the same thing applies. It's just now we're just going to be dealing with a negative. So the new area is going to be x minus 6 squared. The change in area is going to be x minus 6 squared. The new area minus the original area. So let's work with this first x minus 6 times x minus 6, expand, this is negative 6x now, negative 6x, and then we got positive 36. These are like terms, so that would be minus 12x, then we got the plus 36. So that ends up being the expression for the new area, and then the change in area is going to be the new area, which is this. It's already expanded here, so let's just plug it in, minus the original area like that. Notice again the x squares cancel out, we're left with negative 12x plus 36. So that ends up being the expression for the change in area. All right, so fairly simple question. I feel like this one's uh, easier than previous ones we've done especially when we were working with the circle and the change in area of the circle with the radius and the diameter. Um, but yeah, that's how you do this type of question.